Sony just announced the Burano, the first PL mount camera with built-in IBIS, combined with built-in ND. Apart from that, 8.6K resolution, autofocus capabilities, XOCN LT RAW, the new XAVC H codec and much more. At a special press event at London's legendary Pinewood Studios to introduce their new Burano camera, Sony showcased impressive launch films shot by seasoned cinematographers, collected feedback for the elite pro camera developers from Japan and also gave us a chance to shoot with the new camera using some sets and actors. Hi guys, we're here in the UK at the Pinewood Studios in London with Sony, invited by Sony because they just introduced a new camera. And I'm here with Daniel from Sony. How are you? Oh, thank you, I'm good. So today is a big day for you guys. I mean, last time I think I was here, one of the last times was for the FX9 launch. When was it, four years ago? Yes. Somebody said it was exactly on this day four years ago when yes. you showed it to us, which is funny. Yes. And here we are again for the next camera in the lineup, Cine Alta lineup actually. The Burano. The Burano. What can you tell me about the newly announced Burano? Oh, how much time do we have? Well, let's do a quick walkthrough and I'm just going to nag you with questions every now and then. Okay. Well, I mean, this is the uh, uh, newly uh, Cine Alta camera. So just like the Venice camera and the previous uh, Cine Alta cameras, this has superb image quality. And we want this to be a reliable technical partner for anybody who invests in the camera to have this as a a technical partnership that this is a reliable tool set and it's got great image quality and it's simple and intuitive so people can learn to use this camera very quickly especially if they have of course some any kind of sony background knowledge of previous cameras but even for those who might come from another manufacturer they would have a very easy time going over to this camera and start using it immediately so this sits in between the FX9 and the Venice 2, correct? Or correct. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that is fair because the uh, FX9 designed to be a brilliant camera for the solo operator, being able to, at a price point, to be affordable to be used at uh, various productions where the budget is not unlimited. Uh, where the Venice 2, I mean, superb image quality. However, that is designed to have a crew around them. So you have a DP side. And then you have the assistant side where the assistant has most control. So if you have a, you're an independent mindset and you're going to be alone with the Venice camera, then you need to work at both sides of the camera. This one is designed to be worked at from the operator side. So you have that the control from this side. So it's also much smaller, of course, and yeah. much lighter. Yes. What are we talking about in terms of weight? Well, let's say if we look at the FX line, it's uh, 800 grams heavier. If we look at the Venice camera, uh, it's about 1.2 kilos lighter. So what is the weight? It's 2.85 kilograms. So it's really good for a solo operator on the shoulder. Yes, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not as light an S as an FX3 or an FX6, but it's rugged, it's robust, and you know where you have it positioned when you have it handheld and uh, shoulder mode. So it's, it's a very stable camera to work with in handheld applications. But let's talk about the internals. I mean, we've yeah. seen what it looks like. Yes. Let's talk about the heart of it, which is the sensor. Mm -hmm. What resolution are we talking about? So resolution, where photo, photo size wise, we have an 8.6K uh, in, in terms of what, how many photo sites we have. We can do some various things with the camera. So either we can record internal XOCN, so uh, compressed RAW, we can record this internally with this camera. Just like the Venice 2 or the Venice 1, we're able to record the XOCN in the LT version, which is the light version that is 30% lighter than the standard version. Okay, so are we talking about in terms of data rate? Well, let's say that you have about one hour material in full 8.6K, that would give you around 40 minutes of uh, time, recording okay. time. So it's pretty efficient. Yeah. Yes. On a, on a card, how big? Uh, well, that's up to you. Uh, there are some various uh, CF Express Type B cards already available. Yeah. But at this announcement, we are also announcing a one terabyte and a two terabyte version. Okay, so one terabyte is what well, you said. One terabyte that should give you one hour and twenty minutes, if my head okay. calculations is okay. Okay, interesting. So this is actually the first camera, except for the Venice, that can record exos any type of exocn or a type of exocn. Internally, right? Because Correct. FX9 Correct. can't do that. 
Interesting. That's correct. So we're suddenly stepping into what can Sony do with its 16-bit ExoCN and giving you a full data count of your pixels so you can have an undebayed workflow. So you can record raw and you can have lots of settings that you've made by meter data. But afterwards, you can go into your NLE and you can adjust uh, the white balance, the exposure index. You can adjust everything afterwards because you're recording meter data. You're not recording in video. It's yeah. undebayed. You do the video of processing at debearing afterwards. So that was my next question, actually. You, you said 16-bit raw, like ExoCN, the normal ExoCN, the light also is 16-bit. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, ExoCN is 16-bit. Even though it's the LT version, the compression ratio might change. It's, the, it's how we, in 2018, did a recalculation. How can we do the algorithm so we can go to 6K or 8K high speed, but still having uh, Im great image quality, but lower files. And that's something that we've had great success with with the uh, Venice camera. And now we are able to demonstrate this also with the Burana camera as well. And you were talking about the metadata workflow being able to change settings afterwards. So we're talking about settings like ISO. Yes. We're talking about settings like white balance. Yes. So the kind of thing that people are used to from a workflow from another manufacturer's camera for a long time, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Very cool. So 8.6K. Is yeah. the resolution. Yeah. Um, we also in up to 30 frames per second, right? Uh, 8.6K, we can, with the fullest of uh, yeah. um, pixel capture, if we want to call it that, we, uh, we can go up to 30 frames per second, that's correct. Um, but we can also do some uh, little bit of engineering magic and do some uh, cropping. So it's still full frame, but we're, and we're still in 8K. But here we can do some uh, some magic in terms of recording either in a 6K resolution as a uh, as an export. We also have the oversampling ca capabilities, plus just like we did with other other cameras. So Venice has a 6K sensor, and you could oversample to a 4K image. Venice 2 has an 8K sensor, you can oversample to a 4K image. Uh, so this is uh, by using the the full frame image capture, you are able to take that Bayer pattern and great, get some really good oversampling. So if you want to have a quicker turnaround time, recording XAVC is possible, but you're oversampling from an 8K image sensor scan to a 4K resolution file afterwards. Okay. What if we switch to higher frame rates? What do we have available? Uh, so we have the highest frame rate is up to 120 frames per second. And that's by having a either a 4K scan or 4K um, resolution. So regardless, if you do you want to have an MXF from XAVC, which gives you a video file, then we can go up to 120p at 4K. Uh, but we can also do it in ExoCN. And here we can then scan and, uh, and get a, um, a Super 35 crop and then get, give you actually a 420p, but in ExoCN. Because that's raw and it needs to be pixel by pixel, pixel, right? That, that it needs to scan. Well, but we also do, we, we have a little bit of a, a engineering magic as well. So we, I can't go too much in detail for, for today, uh, but, but we do have some options where we're able to do something. So you, you are scanning a little bit larger than what you're actually getting okay. on a pixel count. But you said you can use the full sensor readout yes. for 4K 120 if you record in XAVC or? Well, I mean, we, we get, let's say we get the full width. Yeah. So, because this is a 36 millimeter sensor, uh, just like the Venice, so we can get the full width. But as you probably remember, the Venice and the Venice 2 has the height of a uh, 24 millimeter lens. Yeah. Oh, sensor, sorry. 24 millimeter sensor size. And this means that you can capture full three by two when recording ExoCN. You can't do that with there's a Burana camera. The Burana camera is a 16 by 9 or 17 by 9 camera. Okay. Just like the FX9, FX6, but here you've got the full uh, ExoCN capture when you're doing that. But that kind of limits the usability for anamorphic, right? You, um, if, yes. if you cannot do the full sensor of open gate uh, readout. That's true. That's, you're completely right. Uh, is that something that might come in the future with a firmware update or it's completely impossible? It should, um, technically it should be possible. I think what we need right now with uh, the early stages of this being a prototype, people get the experience about the camera and they give us, Sony, their uh, feedback. I'm sure everybody watching will. <laughs> and <laughs> please do, please do. Yeah, I can see a lot of people using this, for, wanting to use it also for anamorphic shooting, of yeah. course. Yeah. But okay, that's about the sensor. It's very interesting. So you say there are also XAVC options still there. Yes. But XOCN Lite LTE is the preferred. 
that's uh, that's the highest quality yeah. that you could get from this camera and it's again it, yeah. compared to what we do with the fx3 6 9 i mean the the only way to do any wall recording is using an external recorder here we're introducing an internal workflow yeah. but still raw perfect that's interesting we're also just introducing a new exocn which is using H H E V C okay so h265 this is called xavc h and this will be available when the cameras uh released to the market then there's going to be a new codec available this means that you can do mxf xavc at 8k so it's much more efficient in terms of uh getting com well comparing to an uh, exocn so if you want to have 8k and you want to have a fast turnaround time video wise then you, with, this, with this new flavor, you can do that. Interesting. Is this XAVC-H also coming to existing camera models, or it's not something that's possible? Mm, I wish I knew that, but okay. I, I don't know that today. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Talking about recording, uh, we're now moving on to CF Express Type B. Correct. Yeah. Cards, which is nice. So that's an industry standard by now. Yes. You also introduced some new cards for that. Well, we uh, file sizes where we we do have the CF Express Type B, but this is the first camera from yeah. Sony that supports yeah. this. I mean, we have some still cameras around that does it. Yeah. Our uh, competitors uh, are also using it, so there are a lot of these cars around. These uh, CF Express Type B are faster than the A, and we need this extra speed if we want to do uh, 8K ExoCN recording. So, if you're looking at what we do with uh, CF Express Type A, then yes. This is a card type that is more expensive, but it is more reliable, it is faster. However, if you look at what other cameras we have that can record XOCN, we're looking at AXS cards. Yep. These are much more expensive. However, they are faster, which is why they can do the ST and the XT version. This one uh, will be able to do the LT version and the B, the type B, yep. is more than good enough for that. Yep. There's something which is really an absolutely first in the industry in this camera, uh, yeah. which is the combination of the ND filter and the in-body stabilization. Yes. That's kind of amazing because in the past we've always heard it's not possible. Yes. Now it is. What, what can you tell me about it? Well, we, we made everything smaller or thinner, so suddenly now it's possible to actually have uh, more items hardware wise squeezed into the the body of the camera so uh, if we look at image stabilization or uh, ibis uh, you previously had to choose an fx3 or an fx30 to get ibis but then you wouldn't have the variable nd filter uh, vice versa if we look at the fx6 or the fx9 you get an electronic variable nd filter but then you don't get ibis now with the barato you get both and this is the first cinealsa camera that we are announcing that has the electronic ND filter. So the electronic ND filter is using not an optical system, but an electronic system where it uh, exchanges the clear filter to an uh, electronic uh, LCD type, which we can add a current to. And then we can electronically control how much exposure goes through and hits the sensor. So it's a very elegant way of giving you uh, control in the, uh, let's say the dynamic scene and environment. So if you have a, gimbal movement and you're moving between a low light scene to a bright light scene then you can uh, use the electronic ND filter to compensate for that exposure change without compromising iris or shutter speed or any other thing that would give you a, an image uh, consequence. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting however the Venice is an as you know an optical ND filter. Yeah so but this is the same system we have in the FX6 and FX9 right which is very well established. Well, it's a, I'd like to say it's a mix between what you can get from the FX6 in okay. terms of the, uh, the electronic ND filter yeah. and then you got the FX3 which is the uh, IBIS. Oh. So, so this is the first camera that does this and yeah. uh, it's also the first camera that has PL mount from birth. There. So out of the box this camera will have PL mount support and you have IBIS. So imagine all the people are using uh, PL mounted lenses yeah. who uh, want to use these in the handheld applications. And now you're getting an in built in stabilization with this yeah. system. So there's a PL mount, but there's something behind the PL mount, right? Correct. So anybody who's worked with the Venice 2 uh, would know that by removing the PL mount, uh, behind there is a hiding in, uh, an E mount, fully E mount, full frame with. Uh, and the level lock type. So it's not the standard email where you turn the lens to lock it. Here you turn the lock to lock the lens and it's much tighter. This email is uh, on the FX9 and is also on the Venice and the Venice 2. Now it's also on the, on the Burano. However, as we mentioned before, this has the electronic ND filter, the image stabilization, 
and it also has the autofocus. So the Venice does not have the autofocus capability. This one does. So it's got the latest autofocus capability. So it's not only using the AI to recognize this is a human face. I should not be distracted by anything else than human faces, but it can also detect for the eye. If you turn away from the camera and it's tracking a person, it will, it will scan for the exoskeleton of a human body and it will then f uh, keep the autofocus on that person, even though they turn their face away from the camera. Yeah, amazing. Uh, they're just a combination to finally have this. There's hope that in the future we will also see alpha cameras, which have IBIS and an ND filter built in, which everybody has been asking about for a very long time. So I mean, I hope so. Uh, to be honest though, I mean, just so you know, um, the, yeah. the, the size of the camera is bigger than a still camera. Yeah. So the, we are using this size so we can squeeze all of this in there. Where if you are needing the space to exchange from a clear filter to an LCD, you need to make a little bit bigger camera than the small still cameras that we have. Well, you know, still cameras with a grip are also big. So yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Very cool. So um, let's talk about, uh, what did we forget? Actually, the viewfinder. I mean, we have a new monitor on here, which is very, very detailed and crisp. Um, but this is a similar system, but a bit more advanced than the FX9, right? Where you put a loop on top. Yeah, we, um, so we, we've collected a lot of feedback. And with uh, the introduction of the uh, FX line, we did, did, did some improvements on the FX line of the LCD compared to the previous models of the FS5 and the FS7 that we released. 2014, 2015. Uh, the, um, we still got comments and, and, well, constructive feedback that we could do an engineering mechanically, we could do this better. No. And we've been taking this criticism seriously. And this is the result of the, the latest uh, achievement or the latest um, update from Sony with the Burano. So it's, uh, it's got the same protocol as the FX9 and FX6. So technically you could put this onto an FX6 or the FX9. However, uh, here we've got a much more rugged system. It's much more stable. It's, it stays put and you um, you'll still have the touch focus. We added some extra buttons and a home button. So anybody who remembers the Venice camera or the Venice 2 remembers what the home button does. It goes back and gives you a complete overview of the camera settings. It's very quick and intuitive to change these settings because you've got these six big items where you would want to quickly change them without having to go into the menu and, and changing this and remember, well, where is this in the menu? How do I change the lookup table in the Sony camera? Well, here it is. Press the home button, you see the look, you can change the look, it's mm -hmm. very intuitive, it's so fast. Okay, great. Let's talk a little bit about the connectivity and audio. Okay. Um, uh, where I think this is where some of the biggest differences are to the Venice 2, right? In terms of what ports are supported with what output and that kind of stuff. Because I wonder, the more I hear from you, who is still interested in buying a Venice 2? Mm, no, it's a fair question. It is a fair question. I mean, the, we, to answer your question about the Brado and, and regarding the audio, so uh, the, the Venice 2 has the, the, the possibility to go between analog and digital. This is an analog audio input camera. It has, from the body, two analog inputs. You've got two fully-sized XLRs, and they can be a line or a mic or a phantom power signal, but they can't be digital. However, what you can do is you can add the MI shoe and the MI shoe from the out of the box is not there, but it is hidden inside the top. So the top has a little hidden door and here you can actually put, you can put the FX9 handle. So if you have an FX9, you can remove the top handle and put that on the Burano and that will give you channel three and channel four via the MI shoe. If you don't have an FX9 already lying around, well then you, what you could do is contact one of the Sony professional dealers and here you can order that handle as a separate spare part and put that onto Burano, meaning that you, if you really do want to have the solo operation of having not only the camera control, but also four audio channels recorded into the camera by yourself, you can do that with the FX9 handle put on top. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And connectivity in terms of SDI, HDMI, how does it compare to Venice and what can it do? I mean, just a rough yeah. overview. Sure. I mean, Venice is made probably the most flexible camera we have because we have so many outputs and we can change between a director, producer, the DIT and the, the camera assistant yeah. and even the, even the photographer himself, he can get his own signal and you can add lots of things with the Venice camera. This is a little bit more limited. However, we do have a, uh, we have two SDIs, SDI1 and SDI2. SDI1 can be set to 12G SDI. So with the, with the right camera setting, we can then achieve a fully uh, 4K signal outside of the camera. We also have an HDMI, 
and the HMI is also fully supported. Uh, we have time code in. Uh, you can switch between in and out. Uh, you have a genlog signal. So if you want to put it in an environment where you need uh, the camera to be synchronized, mm -hmm. let's say you might have some LCD panels that you're trying to film up against, um, that would work as well. We also have the uh, uh, Ethernet for remote control or internet connectivity, and we got built-in Wi-Fi, and we got a USB-C as well. So here you have the possibility to connect different items to get remote connectivity, and uh, being getting either access to the camera from remote, or if you want to send files from the camera to somewhere else. Okay, remote, could I, that also means the, the remote app where you can monitor remotely? On yeah. Wi-Fi, yeah. Okay. Correct, so you have the access from applications to control the camera, but you also have the possibility to hook it up with a, uh, let's say, a, a fully professional RCP, a remote control panel mm -hmm. that you might have in a studio environment or in an OB truck. This will also support that via okay. the Ethernet plug. Great. Last but not least, mm -hmm. what comes in the package? Because I see also this handle, which I think is optional. Yes. But are there different packages or how, you know, how is it going to be in the market? No, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not fully prepared for what we're going to um, have available for different kits. Um, but um, what we are going to be av have available, as you mentioned, um, as an option, you can buy the grip. So we redesigned the grip based on feedback. People were not happy that you had to re unscrew the ARRI reset. Yep, I was every never happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Well, I mean, who would be? I mean, every time you take the camera out of the bag, you have to un unscrew the ARRI reset, then move it, which can be noisy, and then you have to uh, uh, tighten it again. Yep. And after you do this a couple of times, you need to tighten more and more. There's more wear and tear on the on the ARRI reset screw to actually do this. So we've changed the design so it has a locking mechanism that can be released really quickly with the thumb and you can switch from a bag mode to a handheld mode to a shoulder mode very strictly, very elegantly with this new mode. But right. you, maybe there are people out there who likes the Barada but does not need the handle and therefore it's an option if you want to buy that itself. But okay. what does it get included? You get the camera, the body, and you get the top handle. On the top handle, you can fix the LCD, which is, which is also part of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And on the LCD, you have a newly designed hood. So if you're outside in the sunlight and you want to have full exposure control and see what you're going to do, what the what the LCD can show you, but in a controlled environment, you can use the new the newly hood uh, and get full control of, uh, overview of what you're what you're actually showing. Great. I mean, I'm sure there's a million other things to talk about, but we should wrap it up because. You know, like Alexandru gets tired behind the camera. Thank you for filming this. Yeah, thank you. Alex. And uh, yeah, but uh, in general, uh, let's wrap it up by uh, talking about pricing and availability. Yes. What will it cost, and when will we be able to get it? Rough. Well, roughly, let's. If we, if you budget around 25k euros, then you're not going to be too disappointed when the camera is released. The camera will be released in uh, early 2024, so it's uh, there's still. It's not going to be an early Christmas gift, uh, unfortunately, um, but uh, around that time, that's uh, that's the plan that we have right now. We want everything to be uh, excellent, be so when you unpack it, it's just like Sony. It works from the start, you know, from the get-go in version one. So we have some prototypes, so everybody can see and feel what this camera can do, and then early 2024, everybody can own their own Burano. Great. Yeah, we didn't talk about footage today, but you know, like we hopefully saw some shots that. I was able to shoot here uh, during this demonstration um, and we will also get it for review to do a mo much more detailed review, of course. So I, yeah. I'm sure you have an opportunity to make an extra YouTube video. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks for the time and thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more about a lot more new cameras.